What is going on guys? Welcome to another episode of The Cutting Board. Today I'm going to take you through how I made these two double barn doors. Let's do it! For my particular design, I used 2x4s and 2x8s from my local Lowe's, which to my later knowledge were not fully dried and I was forced to correct some warping that occurred after I started building. The lumber was pretty rough when I bought it, so I started out by doing a few passes in the planner on each side of the material just to clean up the surfaces. Not totally necessary, but if you do have a planner, there's really no reason not to use it. So once my pieces were planed, I cut them all to length. Each of my doors was going to be 40 inches wide, and I would need 8 2x8s and 2 2x4s for each one of my doors. So setting up stops on the miter saw to make repeat cuts was the easiest way to achieve a good consistent cut. So I planned on using dowels to connect everything. To do this, I purchased a $20 dowel jig from Rockler. Since I knew these doors would be super heavy, I felt these dowels were the best method for joining. So I marked out the places for my dowels using a T-square, and then after labeling them, I could then use the simple jig that lines up with my marks, a clamp, and the drill bit that the kit comes with, and drill a dowel and repeat that process about 75 times for all of my door pieces. After cutting the dowels, I also taped up all the edges of all my pieces, which took forever, and it actually took forever times two since I had two doors to make. And I did this hoping that cleaning up would be easier the next day. More on that to come later. Next I could glue everything up. And here is where I have many regrets. So I lined up all of my pieces on top of 10 foot bar clamps and supported them in the middle to avoid any bending when I put the pieces on top of them. I then applied a crap load of glue to all of the ends of my pieces at once and then realized I was trying to glue up way too much at the same time. Like wow, this was a horrible idea. So then I panicked and rushed to glue in and hammer all of my dowels and get all of my pieces lined up and fitted. Which I did, but it was awful the whole time and I thought I was going to ruin hours of work that I had already put in. However, everything for the most part was okay, and using a hammer with some gradual clamping pressure, I was able to squeeze everything together pretty well. So for the next set of doors, I did one panel at a time and it was much better. If I could do things different and I had had more than one weekend to build these, I would have definitely glued up my panels in sections of three or four and then gone back and glued them all together in a second round of gluing. I found it difficult to clamp everything up at once and keep flat. Had I not had access to a bunch of weights to lay on top, I probably would have been screwed. So when everything dried the next day, I took them out back to clean up and finish, and as I peeled back the tape, which also took forever, I was pleasantly surprised that my prep work ahead of time actually paid off for the most part. I made a single pass over all of the surfaces using a 40 grit flap disc, which helped clean up any of the glue, but also gave the wood a cool saw milled look. It was subtle, and it's maybe hard to see on camera, but it looks really cool up close. And I skipped the orbital sanding this time and just went straight to hand sanding at 120 grit. For color, I wanted to make sure these doors looked damn good. So I used a pre-stain conditioner and a blend of Minwax's ebony and classic gray stain to achieve a charcoal look. Oh, and here's a piece of wood with and without the conditioner. Actually quite a big difference. So to apply the conditioner, simply wipe on an even coat to all of your surfaces, let it dry for about 15 minutes but no more than 2 hours, and then go back and add your stain. So like I said, mine was a mix of two colors which was done purely based on my own subjective judgment to achieve the dark gray look that I wanted. And since I was applying stain all at once, I just mixed everything so I didn't have to worry about varying colors due to different mix ratios. So once they were done, I could actually attach my hardware, which is totally awful if you have to do it by yourself. Now there are a lot of different types of barn door hardware, and they all have their own installation directions, so I won't go into too much detail on my specific set. 
but I started out by attaching the hanging hardware using my Raptor Square, a few drill bits that allow me to create pilot holes and then countersink the hardware into the door, followed by a socket wrench which I used for tightening. Now because I didn't have a header to attach the track better to my studs, I used a stud finder and with a level I could mark areas to pre-drill my holes into the walls that were big enough to accept the lag bolts they provided. And here's the track hardware. The middle spacer components actually made this process quite a bit easier to keep the track even distance from the wall, even though it was still horrible doing it by myself. And I used my socket wrench to hand tighten everything, which again, took forever and my arms were totally dead by the end of the installation. So after what seemed like many years, my track was finally hung and level and it was time to strain my lower back by lifting my super heavy doors into place. I think they probably weighed around 100 pounds each. It's cool. I don't need my lower back to be in good shape for when I'm older. Two additional things I did but were not shown. I did install end stops on the track to prevent the doors from sliding off the ends. I also installed small guides on the ground that used very small wheels to keep the doors plumb to the wall, and I didn't have to route a groove on the bottom of the doors like you guys might have seen in past barn door builds. So once the doors were on the track, I could also install the track safety guide which would prevent them from popping off the track if they were hit the wrong way. And with those guides installed, the doors were done, and I was pooped. You'll notice a small locking mechanism on these doors. Those are awful, and the instructions are totally wrong, so I don't want to even go into how they work. Thanks for watching this video. I am super happy with the design of the doors, and as a first barn door project, I'm really pleased with my work, but I will say that it is quite the exhausting build doing it all in one weekend, and if I can give any advice, it would be to have a partner to help with the installation of the hardware. Thanks again for watching. Make sure you sub to the channel for future videos of me struggling through projects both physically and mentally like this one, and I'll see you guys next time on the cutting board. Thanks.